Dear students, uh, in this class we are going to discuss about uh, the various aspect of minimum wages and the concept of minimum wage, how it came to India and also the definition of uh, minimum wages which we have already seen and also various components of minimum wages and when the minimum wages to be given, whether there is any exemptions can be made by the central government on what are the, uh, the, the findings or we can say that the jurisprudence which is involved and court responses to such cases and also we will see the, uh, the advisory boards and also the, the government to fix the floor wage. So, it is very important to look into the what is a minimum wage. If you look into the historical aspects and we can see that our we will come to the constitutional provision 43 and in 1943 itself the standing labor committee at that point of time and also the labor conference constituted a labor inquiry committee to look into the matters of implementing a minimum wages in the country. So, the work is started by the Britishers at that point of time and a report was submitted that is Gosha Nandan committee report. So, they submitted by the, 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 the standing committee of the labor committee and basis of the report submitted by this Gosha Nandan the minimum wages are the minimum wage policy has been implemented in the country at that point of time. And we can see that so the article 43 of the constitution very clearly says this is the post independent story. 43 very clearly says that the state shall endeavor to secure by suitable legislation or economic organization or in any other way to all workers agricultural industrial or otherwise work a living wage. So, the constitution talks about living wage and also you can see that which will be this living wage which may be sufficient for conditions of ensuring decent standard of life and full enjoyment of leisure and social and cultural opportunities. So, the article 43 of the constitution which talks about a living wage. But we have already talked about the Mahatma Gandhi, Natural, uh, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. So, this act gives provides so 100 days of work in the rural uh, areas and mostly and, and the, the wages are fixed 120 per day. So, this is much lower than the minimum wages fixed by the state governments in many of the states. So, many of the state governments have started increasing this particular 120 rupees. So, there is a lot of conflict of interest between some of the state like Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Maharashtra and other states and the central government was refused to give the minimum wages to the state governments. So, there was a conflict of interest between uh, the states and the center on the implementation of this particular Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. So, this led to the you know the, the litigation in the particular case and also but the Supreme Court very clearly said that and paying lower wages than minimum wages is equal to or uh, it forced labor, but still the central government is providing. So, enhance the minimum wages, but enhance the, uh, the, the, the wages under this particular scheme, but still it is far below than the minimum wages fixed by the state governments. For example, you can see that some of the states like Kerala, the minimum wages is 490 rupees per day presently. At the same time, the wages under MNREGEA is 311. So, there is a huge difference almost uh, we can see that 200 rupees around 200 rupees or 290 rupees difference uh, between the minimum wages and the wages in this particular scheme. West Bengal you can see that the minimum wages are much lower 342, but at the same time the scheme MNREGA scheme the wages are 213 only. So, there is a high disparity. So, why we are discussing about this because you can see that even though the government has implemented minimum wages successfully, but certain governmental schemes are paying much lesser than 
the minimum wages, even though the Supreme Court said that it is uh, forced labor. So, the government reply is uh, you know very clear from this particular case that the government said they do not have funds, but the question is whether there is a justification for the implementation of. So, the government is imposing this uh, minimum wages all over the industry and at the same time the government themselves saying that they do not have the funds for paying 100 days wages for under this particular scheme. So, this is another point of discussion with regard to the minimum wages. If you look into the minimum wages all over India, I would say that there is great disparity. For example, the, the, the highest amount paid is Delhi and the lowest amount is paid is uh, uh, the Pondicherry. So, this is the 2019 data and the 2019 data says, so it is, it is from the economic survey. So, this is the official data. So, you can see that there is a huge difference. So, if it is 550 rupees in Delhi. So, you can see that it is almost you know uh, 100 rupees or you can say that less than 100 rupees in Puducherry. So, this is you know the, the, the disparity. So, the government itself is in under confusion that what is exactly the minimum wages. So, there is a completely a national disparity in minimum wages. Still, there is a disparity in state to state there is a disparity. So, how this disparities can be eliminated? So, that is why, so as I told you that uh, this, is the, this is the parliamentary uh, question response. So, this we have to take it as an official data, then we can see that there is high level of disparity in certain states. Even though there can be a regional disparity due to the development, but it, it cannot be the case that 100 rupees in one state and 500 rupees in another state. So, it cannot happen and, and it, is, it, it, is, it will lead to a great difference in the living standards of the people and which is going to be against the letter and spirit of article 43 of the Indian constitution. But another interesting factor is that if we look into the, uh, the world, if we look into the world and India is one of the lowest paid minimum wages country in the world, one of the lowest. And also we can see that you know interesting fact is that some of the countries like comparing with uh, Philippines or Afghanistan, India Indian uh, minimum wages are much lesser. This is a 2016 data and now we are reached to the level of around 3 dollars. So, we can see that we are reached at the level of uh, Argentina, but, but much lesser than other countries like South Korea or Spain and, and there is no comparison between United States or Australia. So, so we are much paying very low minimum wages in the world over if we compare. Now, we come to the objective of the, the minimum wages, why you want to fix the minimum rate of wages. We already said that there is a great disparity disparity when comparing to the world, disparity in comparing to the state to state, disparity from region to regions. So, the act the objectives are very clear to allow fixed minimum wages in the scheduled employments, the scheduled employments of the center as well as the states. And it empowers the government to take steps regarding the fixation of wages and to revise them every 5 years. So, the provision says that every 5 years the government can revise the minimum wages, but state governments may be within a period of 1 and a half years, 2 years or maximum 2.5 years they revise the minimum wages. So, but the central act says that every 5 years they can revise these minimum wages and this will prevent exploitation of workers throughout the country. And appointment of advisory committees and boards and representation is from you know the bipartite from employees and workers and government. So, all these are going to be tripartite bodies and this minimum wages are going to be I said that already this is applicable to the scheduled employments. The scheduled employments majority of the organized sector is going to be covered by these particular provisions. 
and also we can see that the declared objective is to consolidate the laws relating to wages and bonus which we already see in the, the, the last class and it repeals the present law repeals the payment of wages act 1936, minimum wages act 1948, the payment of bonus act 1965 and equal remuneration act of 1976. So, and also if we look into the you know the provisions and we are going through we are going to discuss about all these provisions in detail what do you mean by minimum wages and how to fix the minimum wages etcetera etcetera. So, we already saw the definition of wages in the last class. So, wages includes according to the new definition which includes the basic wages, the dearness elements and retaining elements. So, this is the definition under the minimum wages act of 1948. The minimum wages act of 1948 you cannot find the retaining allowances. And also you can see that in, in it says that is any remuneration capable of being in express in terms of money can be considered as wages under the minimum wage act of 1948. So, and also it includes house rent allowance. So, house rent house accommodation and uh, so you can see that it is excluded in the new act. So, this constitutional validity of the minimum uh, minimum uh, wages act 1948 was questioned in many cases. So, I have uh, mentioned only one or two cases important cases where the court uh, discussed what is the objective of fixing minimum wages. The court said that in one of the uh, uh, very famous case is B. Unichoni versus state of Kerala 1962. And the court said that fixation of minimum wages is for the preservation of public order. And if no minimum wage is fixed, then it shall lead to arbitrariness by the employees and that shall lead to clashes of interest between employer and labor which shall cause friction in society. So, in order to avoid this friction in society and also the in order to eliminate the arbitrariness and in order to uh, and also in order to fix the minimum wages this particular act came into existence and court said that this act minimum wages act of 1948 is constitutionally valid. And another most important case discussed is with regard to this is Shamrao versus state of Bombay. Here some people are approached the court by saying that it is going to affect their constitutional right under article 191 g of the constitution. So, which talks about freedom of trade. So, they said that these you know fixing minimum wages are going to affect their trade and business. So, the court very clearly said the restrictions, the restrictions under article 19, though they interfere to some extent with the freedom of the trade or business guaranteed under article 191 g of the constitution are reasonable and being imposed on the general interest of the general public are protected by the tapes of 196 of the constitution that is reasonable restrictions. So, even though the fixing of these minimum wages are going to affect certain people, they have to pay more, they have to pay the minimum wages to the employees, but this is for the public interest. So, so the, the, the beginning itself of this particular act, the Supreme Court has uh, mentioned that this is the deed of the hour at that point of time. So, the definition of wages which we already have seen in the last class, which basic pay and also DMS elements and retaining elements are included under the wages now. And but a series of exclusions are there. This we also see this series of exclusions and more importantly, the house accommodation. The house accommodations are excluded. And also we can see that the provision very clearly says contribution paid by employer to any pension 
or provident fund and which interest they may have accrued their own. One way the wage you know the wages code says that it will not come under the definition of wages, but another special legislation income tax act. Income tax act adds the employee contribution and employer contribution as your income they consider it as your income. So, there is a disparity between these two legislations and the, the wages code very clearly says that it would not come under the definition of wages at the same time the income tax act charges on you not only and it, it, it defines the contribution employer contribution also to the pension scheme or to the new pension scheme as uh, a, your, your salary your income. So, you have to pay income tax. So, there is a disparity between the two legislations and also some of the other uh, uh, the, the uh, allowances like conveyance allowances or traveling concession this is also is excluded. So, this exclusions is very clear with regard to the definition of wages and most importantly house rent elements is excluded from the purview of the definition of wages. So, minimum wage also which we have uh, seen uh, the, the definition it says that no employer shall pay to any employee wages less than the minimum rate of wages fixed by the appropriate governments and that is the, the, the central schedule by the central government and state schedules by the state government. So, at the rate of wages now they can fix the, the time work for their time work and also they can fix for the piece work the wages can be fixed. And we already discussed about the same work or work of a similar nature what does it mean. So, we were talking about the same work or work of a similar nature. So, this is very important for the purposes of same wages. So, this is of more of a practical importance whether the same skill is involved in a similar kind of works or not then it can be considered as same work or work of a similar nature. And here the gender discrimination is absolutely prohibited under the new code. So, there shall be no discrimination on the ground of gender and also no discrimination on the ground of gender based on the wages. So, wages relating to wages there should not be any gender discrimination and the employees has to uh, they, they follow same work or work of similar nature the same wages to be paid. And also no employer shall reduce the rate of wages of any employee and make any discrimination on the ground of sex while recruiting and also for in, in terms of work that is uh, the, we are going to see the equal remuneration. So, there must be same work same wages or work of similar nature similar wages and also as I said that all these are clear provisions are laid out under the wages code. And here the, the same work same or similar nature of work is you know is going to be interpreted by the courts in the future. So, clearly it says that it shall be whether it is a same or similar nature work will be decided by the, the notified authorities of the appropriate governments. So, the, the state governments and the central government to notify who is going to determine whether it is the same work or similar nature of work. So, initially the executives are going to uh, determine whether it is the same or similar nature of work and then the appeal will lie. And how you are going to fix the minimum wages? The government is going to fix the minimum wages in following categories. For example, for time work, time work can be of hourly work, daily work or monthly work and the second category is the piece work. The case of employees those who are working on piece work minimum rate of wages on a time work basis shall be fixed. So, minimum rate of wages on time work basis shall be fixed. So, it may be one hour basis or daily basis or the monthly basis. So, it is very simple if 
somebody is working on time work uh, the wages is fixed for monthly wages it is by 26 days so you will get uh, you know per day uh, your wages so you, your calculation should be in accordance with that and in fixation the government will uh, the appropriate government the fixing the rate of wages will look into the skills of the workers usually you can see the state government uh, schedules it talks about agriculture workers it talks about skilled workers it talks about non skilled workers manual workers and also other different categories of works and for a specific geographical area. So, the minimum wages can be changed from you know separate different geographical area to another geographical area and also the minimum rate is maybe a higher rate for hardest nature of work, hardest nature of work like you know they have to work under you know severe temperature or humidity. So, then these and also people those who subject to hazardous occupations, underground work, the temperature or uh, even uh, you know humidity is very high. So, a different minimum wages can be prescribed for uh, the works of orders nature and the norms and the fixation of minimum wages are also prescribed by this particular act. So, here we can see that we already said that the basic rate of wages and allowances. So, it can be adjusted at intervals from time to time. So, usually our calculation of minimum wages is based on cost of index or living index and the cost of index goes up or inflation goes up the government increases the DNS allowance. So, here you can see that the cost of living, the cost of living is always a component part of wages calculation. And also the cash value of the concessions of essential commodities that also is, is should be taken into consideration for the calculation of minimum wages. So, here you can see that, uh, so it is an all inclusive rate of uh, living wages and also the basic rates, cost of living allowances and cash value of concessions together constitute the minimum wages. So, this is uh, in one of the calculation which is mentioned by the, uh, the, the uh, ministry in 2019. So, this is national minimum wage how they calculate. So, it shows that there is a food expenditure the government calculates a food expenditure for a family essential non food expenditure and other non food expenditures. There are three categories which is mentioned and the government fix a, a, so a rupees 375.9 per day for a 26 years working days in a month. So, you can see that how it is calculated. So, it will change from time to time because food expenditures and also essential non food expenditures increases from time. So, the estimation of the national minimum wages change from time to time and that is why you, you see the, the changed or revised minimum wages from time to time. So, these components are very crucial. So, if the prices goes up then also the minimum wage also goes up in the country. So, and also it is very clearly said that no it is the duty of the every employer to pay the minimum wages. No employer shall pay below the minimum rates of wages notified by the state government. And one of the most innovative provision which is introduced in the wage code is the central government fixes a, a, central, a floor wage. So, you can see that the fixing of this floor wage is a 1943 recommendation of the committee labor conference that it was not implemented after you know 74, so 74 years completed it was not implemented. So, the government has implemented this particular uh, recommendation through this particular provision. The government, but central government wants to fix a minimum floor wage at the national level. So, that below the, the, the floor wage no states can fix a floor wage below the floor wage national floor wage. That means, the states will be prevented from fixing a floor wage below 
the floor wage fixed by the central government. So, the government uh, uh, is, uh, presumes that this is going to eliminate or disparities between uh, the regions from state to state. So, another uh, recommendation was the committee recommended was uh, the regional minimum wages. Regional minimum wages which you can see that the country is divided into different regions. So, around 5 regions and the highest which you can see that the, the highest uh, you know the, the paid regions the certain areas of states which you can find and also the, the one of the uh, highest recommended areas is southern states, the southern states up to Gujarat and also most importantly some of the states like uh, you know Delhi and Punjab also is one of the highest recommended areas. So, this is also the, the ministry report. So, we have to rely on these all, all official data. So, the what the government the, the present act the government has come up with a floor wage, but whether they are coming out with regional minimum wages or not it is not very clear. So, these are recommended, but the government has said that the government is going to come with come out with the minimum floor wage. So, where the state governments will be prevented from introducing below the minimum floor wages. So, they can fix higher wages in the state governments, but not below the minimum floor wages. And the wages which as I told you that uh, the objective of the floor wage itself is that the state governments will be prevented from fixing a minimum below this particular floor wage. But if somebody is working below the requisite number of hours in a particular day that they did not pay the complete minimum wages. So, he shall be entitled to the number of hours of work which he is working. So, as if he is working on a full day. So, that means, but at the same time if he is refused to work in a full normal working day or he comes in the morning and put a signature in the buster roll and unwilling to work then the, the, the employer is uh, the employer can cut the wages according to how many hours he is going to work. So, the, all these things will depend upon the circumstances of each case, how much you can reduce the salary. And here you can see that the two, two class of work that means each of which has a different minimum rate of wages applicable. So, one person can do two class of work in a single day. So, he will be paid two salaries, two minimum wages, two different works, two different class of works. So, all these are I think probably the western concepts whether one person can do more than one work in uh, under two employees or three employees per day and he can get three different minimum wages under three different class of work. So, this is also introduced under the UVH code. And uh, most important thing is the piece work. Here the person is employed on piece work for which minimum time of rate is fixed. So, that means the piece rate work is become statutory in India. So, that means it will be calculated in accordance with wages not less than the minimum time rate wages. So, the employees can employ somebody for 2 hours and they can pay for 2 hours work, but that calculation also do not below the average pay of per day uh, minimum wages fixed by the state government from time to time. And here the fixation of minimum working hours are by the appropriate state governments. For example, some of the states are already fixed the working hours as 8 hours. For example, the, the state of West Bengal, state of Kerala and most of the state governments fix the working time as 8 hours. So, your calculation of piece rate work also in accordance with the minimum fixed time of work and also this is not applicable in the case of uh, some people working on emergency basis, unforeseen and preventable circumstances. For example, uh, ambulance drivers who required uh, a 24 into 7 duty and employees working in the nature of proprietary or uh, complementary work which must necessarily carried outside the general working hours 
and also who's is a, 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 you can see that intermittent works so that means employees who are uh, working intermittently also the calculation of work to be out uh, their working hours to be taken into consideration and also certain uh, technical reasons they intermittently they work this is also taken to be that means irregular nature of work is not going to constitute not going to affect the payment of minimum wages so it means the minimum wages has to be paid for workers even though their nature of their work is in such a way that it may be intermittently they may be working there is a gap between the work may be there but if they work for the minimum number of hours fixed by the state governments from time to time and here so as we already said that the rates can be fixed on hourly basis daily basis or monthly basis or longer period of basis and but it is very important to see that how many number of hours are constituting a normal working day then the pay will be calculated based on uh, uh, for example if uh, the working hours are fixed for 8 hours if somebody is working more than 8 hours then it will be considered as overtime and we will see the overtime wages and the overtime wages uh, fixed by the act is double the wages of normal working hours the question is how many employees will be willing to pay double the wages beyond the working hours of anybody in this particular case in 2015 case uh, union of india and others versus cpwd basdur union here you can see that the question was whether the, the workman is entitled to overtime wages the double as i already said that it is the double uh, the rate of ordinary wages so the court in this particular case held that the director general and employees of the union had entered into an agreement that for overtime work the employees would be paid double the wages with reference to the wages received for normal work then such entitlement would be flowing out of the agreement and at the not under the minimum wages that means if the overtime work is fixed by the employer and the employee through an agreement then such kind of agreements won't come under the purview of minimum wages act such kind of agreements will be so the minimum wages will be paid according to the agreement between both the parties not under the minimum wages act and there is penalties for the contravention and violations of the agreement so here if uh, the employer who pays to any employee less than the amount due then the fine is up to 50000 rupees so if an employer pays less than the minimum wages then the penalty is 50000 rupees and also the, the is if an employer is found to be commit the same offense twice within a period of 5 years he shall be punishable with imprisonment for up to 3 months or fine up to 1 lakh rupees or both can be imposed on the employer and also the employer contravenes any provisions of this particular code or rules uh, you know made under it can be punishable 20000 rupees fine and also be you can see that if anybody is found again guilty of the similar offenses that within a period of 5 years such employee shall be punished with imprisonment up to 1 month and also up to 40000 rupees fine or both so the act increase the punishments to a substantial extent or substantial amounts uh, are are imposed as fine for penal offenses and also imposed on the employer those who are violating the provisions and also you can see that if the the offenses are committed by a committee every person who is at who is at the time of that particular committing of an offense who is in charge who is responsible to at that responsible so we already said that employer means who is in the who is ultimate control over the affairs of a particular company he is responsible and he is deemed to be guilty of such offenses and liable to be punished in accordance with the provisions of this particular act so in the case of companies who are is in charge they are going to be responsible under this particular provisions again we can see that if any kind of consent or connivance is attributable to any neglect to any director manager secretary or any other officer of a particular company 
such persons are also be deemed to be guilty of such offences. That means a company which includes a firm, there are limited uh, you know various type of companies now. So, which includes a firm, limited li liability partnerships and uh, other individuals for partnerships, director or partners of firm. So, all these people are going to be liable under the minimum wages, these particular provisions. Then uh, next we are going to the see the quickly going to see the central advisory boards and state advisory boards which are formed under this particular uh, you know the wages code. Here the central government will constitute a central advisory board. The central advisory board is definitely going to have representation all representation in the particular central advisory board representing employees, representing employees and independent persons not exceeding one third of the total members and five representatives of state governments to be nominated to this particular central advisory board. And more importantly, there is a participation of women, empowerment of women through the participation in this particular advisory committee is also provided one third of the members should be women and members of uh, shall be appointed chairperson of the particular board, a particular member will be appointed as the chairperson of the board. So, you can see that a, a tripartite body with in the even independent persons and movement representation is mandated under the provisions of uh, to constitute the central advisory board. And also you can see that the, the fixation they can do fixation revision of minimum wages and also providing increased employment opportunities for uh, women and also the, the extent of women employment in establishments also they can prescribe and also the central government have the powers to issue directions to the state government with regard to any of these particular provisions. And most importantly every state to form another advisory board, state advisory boards and state advisory boards are also eligible to fix or revision minimum wages and also increasing employment opportunities for women and also the movement participation to what extent the movement participation in the employed establishments and you can see that subcommittees can also be constituted under the advisory boards. So, the, the participation is similar to us that of the central advisory board that is representatives of employees, representatives of employees, independent persons and that movement representation and here you can see that the chairpersons will be appointed by the appropriate governments from time to time and also uh, you, can, you can see that they will be tendering advices, advisory board with regard to they are giving advices on various matters such as the nature of work, the, the hours of work, suitability of women for employment, the need of providing increasing employment opportunities for women and other any other matter these advisory boards can give advice to the state governments and central governments. So, when we look into quickly look into this India Premium Wages Act. So, we can see that it provides an elaborate definition of minimum wages and how to fix the minimum wages and there is no ambiguities in fixation of the minimum wages. What are the components to be taken into consideration of fixing the minimum wages and then uh, the, the constitution of central advisory boards and the constitution of state, state advisory boards and more importantly the movement participation women empowerment in this particular advisory boards provisions are provided. So, this is the welcome step and one more aspect to be mentioned is the central government is going to fix a floor wage where below the floor wage the state governments cannot fix the state government wages. India is a diverse country with uh, uh, regional disparities. So, we presume that with this particular floor wage the di regional disparities and the state disparities which we already saw in the presentation can be eliminated. So, thus there is a clear provisions in the code and the new rules are going to be notified very soon. So, this, this can be going to increase or, or consolidate the laws which are relating to uh, the minimum wages in the country. Thank you.